You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Songs of Petrichor. This week, I'm talking to Omer, the drummer from the band. Their new album, self-debut, self-titled album, is coming out in November, but they just put out a single called Nomad. You can watch the music video on YouTube right now. It's a really good song, and I'm really excited to be talking to Omer from the band Songs of Petrichor. Everybody, please welcome to The Pit, Omer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. So how's everything there? Um, things are all right. Uh, we are kind of excited about the album. And we are currently recording our third song. And we haven't released the second one yet. It should be coming out next month. So things are great. Well, before we get into songs of Petrichor and everything, I'd like to learn a little bit more about yourself. So if you don't mind, I, I like to imagine every musician sort of being like a superhero and all the superheroes all have an origin story. So take me back. What do you remember from your childhood? How do you remember finding your passion for music? Oh, I grew up, I mean, I grew up with music. My family loves music. I mean, my household was always full of Elvis and Genesis and Zeppelin, you know. So music is, uh, goes as far as I remember walking, you know. So. <laughs> So your your parents loved Elvis and Genesis and yeah, Zeppelin, yeah. all that stuff? Yep, yep, absolutely. And what what do you remember in the early days? What bands do you remember latching on to first? Um, I was a lot into Indian classical. That's where my roots started. And I was a big fan of Zeppelin from as far as I can remember. I was into Michael Jackson. They were, I had a whole punk phase in my life then I got into heavier music uh, when I first heard Black Sabbath you know that's what changed it for me so that's when I started taking music seriously you know so did you hear like uh, Black Sabbath Black Sabbath the first album first or what do you remember yes. hearing first yeah I remember getting a CD called Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath and the first time I heard it I was totally blown away because I had never heard anything like that and Whenever I listen to their first song, I I can't enjoy the way I did when I did for the first time, you know. So, yeah, it was quite an experience. And so how did you get started on the drums? Well, um, I wasn't sure what instrument I should pick up, but I was fascinated by John Bonham. So I started drumming, you know. But I'm not just a drummer. I also play guitar and bass. And... The fun, a fun fact about songs of Petrico, we are all multi-instrumentalists. Yeah. So we all play different instruments and that kind of helps us with songwriting, you know, because we can understand each other's perspective and we kind of narrow down what should be in this project and what should not be in this project. So, yeah. So for yourself, uh, you picked up guitar as well while you're in your teen years and other instruments? I picked up the guitar much later on, but... Uh, and but the bass guitar I did pick up much earlier as well. And I'm just trying to get in a sense of your musical uh, evolution. At what point did you hear Black Sabbath? Were you already playing drums at that point? No, I wasn't. This is when I was, I think, I don't know, 13 years old or something. You know. Oh, okay, so <laughs> the the fascination kind of grew before playing all the instruments started to happen. Absolutely. The instruments came much later because I felt a need to express myself, you know. So I think Songs of Petrichor, you guys came together in kind of a, you weren't expecting to come together, I guess, but you, Not you all knew, <laughs> you, you, you all knew that you love Led Zeppelin. That seems to be something that comes up a lot. Yeah, that's a common ground. So basically I've been in a lot of different bands and I was never taking them seriously because, you know, it was always a hobby and quite often when you're in different bands, it becomes an effort. But how we met is actually a funny story. So I worked for a company and I had a project with my COO, the head of our group. So, you know, it was quite a successful project. And when our discussion became casual, he asked me, so Omer, what do you do after work? I told him I'm into music. And he said, hold on, take this number and call this guy. So he gave me Shahriyar's number. He's our vocalist and guitarist. And I felt, you know what, this is going to be a formality. I have to pretend to like someone and just agree, you know, for the sake of it. But when we met, we clicked really well because we listened to, I mean, a lot of people appreciate Zeppelin, but we are 
properly into it, you know. So that's a completely different ball game. And we also listen to a lot of Indian classical like Ravi Shankar and Anushka Shankar, you know, stuff like that. So we clicked and we started uh, jamming every other weekend. And um, I mean, we were playing very diverse kind of music, you know, sometimes jazz, sometimes heavy metal, sometimes classic rock, and sometimes uh, folk music. But why we decided to form a band is um, because we felt that one of the biggest uh, missing gaps in the music industry right now is lyrical content. People don't really focus on lyrical content, you know. It's usually um, a composition comes first or a vocal melody. It comes first and words sort of, uh, you know, are wrapped around the melody. But what we do is how we write songs is we think about something, a theme, and we build based on that, you know. So that's how it came into being. And then we met Yusuf. We kind of stole him from another band, you know, because we had our eyes on him for a while. So, so it's a trio <laughs> now. So in the earlier days when uh, it was just you and uh, I can't pronounce his name properly. I'm going to try Shahariar. Shah- <laughs> <laughs> Quite a name. <laughs> We're getting together and playing. Was it like a lot of switching back and forth between instruments and stuff from the early days? Like, I'm going to sit down on the drums for a bit and you go play guitar and then we're just going to switch and just keep sharing ideas? Well, usually what we would do is just, um, you know, play on acoustic guitars. I would play drums on an acoustic guitar and he would, you know, play on an actual guitar. Then later on, we moved to instruments. But yes, we were switching around just for fun. You know, we would get bored. Okay, I'm bored. Now you play drums. That sort of thing. (laughs) And now with Yusuf in the band, has that continued? Do you guys still like to switch around instruments while you're jamming and trying to write songs and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So quite often you will see um, a lot of guitar parts are written by me. A lot of drum parts are written by Yusuf. So, you know, it's like, I would call it a perfect trio. But so then how in the end do you guys decide what song you're or what instrument you're going to play for that song? Have you ever thought like maybe we'll just keep switching instruments for each song and do whatever we want to play? Mm. <laughs> so we do that usually for fun, but um, but let's say drums are my main instrument. So I stick to that when it comes to performances, you know, uh, and vice versa. But when it comes to songwriting, we just try to find inspiration however we can and quite often it just comes around from roaming around or traveling or just changing our instruments you know simple things like that so was nomad one of the first songs that you guys started working on not at all it's um it came much later on so we have about eight or nine songs that we've written and a lot of them are drafts but nomad is uh the one which we felt that this should be out there now you know that kind of thing because it explains us a lot, it it isn't really about a nomad. It's more about, you know, the feeling of not belonging to a single location, you know, that we are in a constant journey trying to understand what home means. And, you know, we have lived in so many different parts of the world that we start questioning that where do we really belong? And if we live here, is that enough? You know, do we have our own community? Do we have like-minded people? We know they're all scattered here and there, you know. So it really is a kind of a poetry, you may say. And like the, going back to what you were saying earlier about how you guys focus so much on lyrics, did this kind of begin as a lyrical idea or just kind of a, like a mood and a feeling with the music that somehow got attached to lyrics? Because like, it's a really cool idea. Like I love how with the artwork, you, you guys put a bed out in the <laughs> desert. Like it really just kind of shows it right there. It's like, you know, your home is it's out there. It's not it's always moving. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm and I'm really happy that uh, you got that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, actually it started off as that um the whole idea of lyrics comes first and we build things based on that, you know. It's li- really an art, really. And um why we're called Songs of Petrichor is because, you know, now we all love the rain. And what happens to me, for instance, is whenever it rains, I go through a lot of nostalgia and you have all these different memories from here and there that just come out, you know. So we, we thought, let's write about, let's write songs which tap certain emotions, you know. So that's what Songs of Petrichor really is about. And you will see that a lot of our songs 
may often sound like they are a completely different feeling or a completely different genre and that's the reason we are called songs of petrico because these are different stories and different memories and they're all based on actual experiences so in comparison with the other songs that you guys have coming up with on, on the album how would you kind of compare nomad would you say nomad is kind of one of your more uh, heavier songs or softer songs uh, we can say it's our second heaviest song you know we've got one song which is uh, which will probably be our last song it's called something nice it's our heaviest but you know all in all we can say we are a progressive rock band with elements of oriental grunge with elements of classic rock and a lot of folk rock also so yeah are there any bands going today that you guys find you really relate to so from our contemporaries not really we are we are still stuck in the past we are looking for we are looking for artists and bands which can really absorb us but it's not happening i mean i'm actively searching for different artists and you know there're always great songs here and there but it's hard to get into them you know what i mean right yeah it's it's hard to uh just kind of fit in the same sort of vibe i yes. guess yeah yes. yeah but maybe that's maybe that's a good thing maybe it's good to stand out I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh with I- improvising in your live performances seems to be a thing that you guys enjoy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do you guys sometimes like to switch instruments in your live performances? Yes, we do that. I mean, we haven't had a lot of live performances uh, under this yeah. band name. We yeah. just had it as friends, you know, or uh, that's because, you know, we were formed just before the pandemic and, you know, we had so many ideas and we were so excited that let's do this, let's do that. And you know what? Just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that's a huge transition and being used to doing the live performances, writing the music, uh, thinking about playing it on a stage. And now to go into the studio, was, was that your first time going into a studio? Um, for me, yes, yes. But I think what, what Serial you... has um, been to a studio a few times. Actually, I was in a band before this, and uh, the lead vocalist owned the studio. But it was a different genre, you know, so I had to kind of leave it. So, yeah. This is, I would say, the first time we have been in a professional studio. I mean, there have been all these, uh, you know, um, people out there who are sort of entrepreneurs, but they're not professionals. So I would say Wall of Sound is a proper professional setup for us. What sort of things did you kind of have to change? Or is there anything that you felt like got kind of felt different when you got into the studio that you kind of had to learn or something? Um, not at all, actually. We just felt very welcome. And we were... That's great. We were very... We were quite supported that just do your own thing. Because, you know, they're trying to take bring out the artist within us. And yeah, it's actually helped in every single way. Is the album just the three of you guys, or did you guys bring in any guest musicians? Uh, well, it's just the three of us, but in one of our songs, we might have um, some session musicians because um, we need we need we need a group of people who can sort of chant, you know. So, so what made you guys decide to make Nomad the single so far? Um. Actually, our record label encouraged us that um, this is a good way to start. And yeah, I mean, we don't have a solid reason why we did that, but it felt like the right thing to do because it was ready and we feel like this is a song that a lot of people can relate to. It seems like a good introduction to the band as well, in my mind. It's like a good way of getting into your guys' sound as well as the kind of maybe the concept behind what Songs of Petrichor is about? Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. You're right. So I guess it was a subconscious decision. <laughs> <laughs> Do you plan on doing more music videos? We were thinking of animation videos. Oh. Yeah. Very cool. Is, is that just kind of a thought for now? We have spoken to a few artists out there and just to see if we can help each other. And so we have not confirmed it because uh, once we 
record a few more songs, then we will finalize it. But it will happen. So obviously, like I was saying before to you, uh, you have traveled a lot as I've been watching your Instagram. You've been going around the world. You've seen Japan, Sri Lanka. You've been to Norway, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the best countries I've been to. I've been to a total of 42 countries. And before the pandemic hit, this is what made me feel alive, you know. And so going to different parts of the world and stuff, when do you think you kind of got bitten by the travel bug? (laughs) Um, No, that's a good question because I think I, I don't know, really, I don't know. It started off as, because I used to love reading about different parts of the world and, you know, how there are good and bad people everywhere. So I think I first started traveling around Southeast Asia and I loved it not just because of the parts of the world I was traveling to, but also because I learned a lot about myself. So, yeah, I felt like that's the best way to understand the world around you and yourself. So it became an addiction, and I feel like there's so much to learn, and you can learn more from traveling and reading than you can from an educational degree or whatever, you know. So this started around when I was uh, studying, yeah. And has music kind of mixed in with that? Uh, was I mean, originally, I imagine you guys were thinking of going on tour with this, taking going, taking the music out and going going places, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we kind of believe that our audience will be international, yeah. And uh, I mean, just to add another thing, I I mean, I've grown up with Zeppelin and Iron Maiden and, you know, a lot of different musicians. Uh, the part of the world I'm from, I felt like because I owe them for giving me such a great childhood and upbringing, I must make sure that... I get to see them live. So I have traveled to Australia to see Sabbath, to the UK to see Robert Plant live, to Paris to meet Jimmy Page. You know, I've just been doing that all over. So that's another reason why I travel to, you know, just as a way of saying thank you. I saw that too. You even had a friend who uh, brought a picture of you so that he could give it to Ozzy Osbourne, just so that you could kind of say that you were there to sort of meet Ozzy, right? Like, so is it is yeah. it kind of like a bucket list in your mind? Like you kind of have to get these, to see these things. Absolutely. You know, this is actually a funny story because I was at a Roger Waters concert and I did meet him, by the way. So. I had a visa issue and I had to, so I got these VIP tickets for Aussie in Prague. I couldn't go because I had a visa issue and which is very annoying. So I met a guy over there and we became friends. He was an editor for a classic rock uh, magazine. And I told him, can you do me a favor? Can you just go to Aussie? And he was like, are you sure this sounds too good to be true? I said, yes, but just take a picture of me. (laughs) (laughs) So... Ozzy was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, now that you obviously can't travel, uh, keeping focus on this album, has this been mostly what's been keeping you busy through the whole quarantine lockdown thing? Or is what, what other sorts of hobbies and interests have you found? Have you, have you learned how to make bread? Or <laughs> <laughs> See, not at all, actually. Um, I wish we could jam more. I wish we had more time because, you know, we're all working and we all have other things in our life. So it's very hard to match our schedule. To be honest, we don't meet as much as we would like to. But um, but when we do, you know, it's like instant chemistry. That's why I call it a perfect trio. Um, other than that, yeah, I learned cooking during the lockdown after several attempts of burning, burning whatever <laughs> I'm eating, you know. And I keep myself busy by reading and, uh, I don't know, watching films and just playing different instruments. And, you know, I mean, there's there's always a lot to do, but um, work gets in the way. Yeah, <laughs> it sure does. Uh, this is a staple question that I just kind of always ask everyone. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Just be honest to yourself, you know. I think it's important to realize that we have a really short life and we should do whatever we can to 
express ourselves in some way in whatever platform we can so yeah well put well very well put yeah thanks is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners um if you like our music please follow us because we have a lot of we have much more exciting stuff on the way and what we are aiming for is that every new song that we release is better than the previous so yeah but ultimately that's for you guys to decide <laughs> <laughs> everyone you've been listening to the peach pit i've been here talking with omer from the band songs of petrichor from saudi arabia their album self-titled debut album comes out in november but their new single nomad is out on youtube now go watch the music video it's really good great music Omer, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and uh, hopefully we'll do this again in the future. Definitely. Thanks for having us, Derek. And yeah, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Take care of yourself. Take care. Take care. Bye.